It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC South. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be our visitors taking on our home team. Brandon Gaughan and Charles Davis back with you. Happy to be along for this battle in the AFC South. And this is going to be an interesting division to watch. Fairly or unfairly, it's been much maligned the last few years. We've got some teams in full rebuild mode, but there's a good deal of talent here as well. There certainly is, and it starts in Jacksonville with their young quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, who's really setting the pace in that division, but the other three trying to get involved. All of them drafted quarterbacks. Will Levis in Tennessee, C.J. Stroud in Houston, and Anthony Richardson in Indianapolis. All of them trying to forge new identities with young quarterbacks. The ball on the tee, we're set for football. And off we go on EA Sports. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they will be led out by their six foot six quarterback. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They are sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Back to throw. Johnson. He's got right on the short throw. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and it passed him up to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. The keeper nets him only a yard, and that's going to bring up fourth. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. So they bring out their putter. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. So here now the AFC for their first drive. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6'4". This is what this man was born for, the big spotlight on the national stage like this. Really, his entire career has demonstrated incredible poise no matter what type of situation his team was in. No situation is too big for him, and you can tell in the way that he takes the field. His self-belief is evident, and he gets the job done in his mind each and every time. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Looking to throw. Daniels. And he can't escape and down he goes. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack and it brings up second. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, 
that's where he can really hurt you. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here's third and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. In trouble, and he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. The AFC punt team out there now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. 42 yards on the punt, just two on the return. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. From the 43, here's second and two. Back to throw. Johnson, he's got right on the short throw. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. So the completion there, Charles, looking at this defense, certainly in for a tough task here this afternoon. What are some of the keys for them if they want to come out on top? Well, the first thing, partner, is they just allow the completion there. They don't want to get a string of those going. Let him get his confidence. Let him get into the rhythm of the game, the flow of the game, and all of a sudden, he's feeling like he can do no wrong. You want to really get after his timing a little bit, knock a few balls away, and make things uncomfortable for him. Because if he feels relaxed, you are in for a tough afternoon. Here now, second and four. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Daniels. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Second and six. Up the middle they go. Daniels. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Johnson off the play fake. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hook up and set up a first and goal. Here we go now on first and goal. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. That run wasn't a big breaker, but I don't think the guys on offense mind very much. They've got a nice drive going, and they might just be luring the defense in a little bit. They could probably come back with a play action, maybe go over the top. But right now, on this drive, their playbook is open. On second and goal, they'll give it to him again. And this time, he is in. Yes taking it in from two yards out. And his guys have taken a first-quarter lead. 
just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. So now the AFC offense here coming back out for their second drive. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Firing quickly here and that's complete. And he'll be taken down but not before he works it past the 50. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 48-yard line. Down to about the 45. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. To throw on second down, Daniels. And Diggs has it. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. And that is incomplete. Yeah, offenses always try to be smart about when they're trying to dial up a screen to the running back because they understand you can only go to the well so many times in the game without the defense starting to anticipate the call. The AFC punt team out there now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And look at this, he's going to keep it. And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool him. And as a result, possession switches hands fourth and short in this part of the field. You just know the special teams coordinator was rallying the team saying, watch the fake, watch the fake. But Brandon, don't they usually say that on every punting situation? Oh, yeah, they can be up 40 in the fourth quarter. That's their job. They scream that every time. And this time, though, his team locked in, and they were well aware that it truly was a situation that they could fake it, and they were ready for it and stopped it. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The offense already on the field here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a third down coming up. And that's going to be incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. And on now is the punter as he's on to punt for Houston. 
And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> and they get him down, but now before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. 48 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. On third down, Diggs. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. Brent, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have had a few men in the box there. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, Run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they do. They'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. Looking to throw. Daniels. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the AFC is an extra point away from tying this game up. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver. And that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. The extra point splits the uprights, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Johnson now throwing on first down. 
And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. From the 21, it's second and 10. Back to throw, Johnson. He finds his man complete. That's Daniels. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Thomas has got it complete. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. It'll be a 39-yard pot four on the return. And the AFC will take over first and 10. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. Looking to throw on second down. Daniels. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll run on first down. Diggs down to about the 45. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down at seven. They'll keep it on the ground. Diggs and able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. The AFC thus far on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Under pressure and down he goes. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up fourth. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. Now Houston's offense taking over again. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you try and score when given the opportunity. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Now Johnson on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now a second and ten. Looking to throw. Johnson. Thomas brings it in. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 
That's a gain of 31 with right around one minute to go in the quarter. A very nice job right there, working the middle of the field, able to create some separation and then utilize it to not just make the catch, but turn up field once he got the ball in his hands. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Complete to right. Touchdown! A great effort there. 26 yards. And his guys have taken the lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets a head of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Extra point attempt to come here. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive, four plays. And the result, a Houston touchdown. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 22 yards there, a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, Nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Wide open receiver complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. They'll look to throw again. And his throw is incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. And every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Now on fourth down, out comes the field goal unit here. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game.
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Houston's offense already at the line set to get going. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. It'll be a gain of four here, and it will take us to the end of the first half of play. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports halftime report. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The AFC going to get the ball first as we are back underway on EA Sports. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The AFC offense now set to start this third quarter. But Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. To throw on second down, Daniels. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. The AFC punt team out there now on presumably to punt, though he did complete a pass earlier. That's returnable now for Smith. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's across the 45. It'll be second down. Well, how about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. Second down and eight. Back to throw. Johnson. That is caught by Stewart. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The big gainer there on the catch and run. 37 yards. It doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half. And that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. And he's 
is in. Touchdown, Houston. A 16-yard touchdown run. And his guys find a way to stretch that lead. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes it a 21-10 game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But if the strong safety position end up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. 92 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Throwing on first down, Daniels. He'll find Taylor, that's complete. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. Now a handoff up the middle. Diggs, and slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe up to the 41. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First target, first catch, and a first down. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for it, but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 49-yard line. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Oftentimes, we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the past. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That'll put him close to 100 yards receiving. He's at 98, and he's got a first down. That's a big gainer on that play, and from experience, I can tell you, that's where defensive backs will come into the huddle and say, guys, how about some pass rush? But you're going to say it nicely because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. 
Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Third quarter here in Indy. This is second and ten. Off the play fake. Daniels. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. That's a big force incompletion there to bring up third and long. And this defense can still salvage a little momentum by forcing them to kick a field goal. Because just a few plays ago, they looked like they were headed towards the end zone. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Back to throw again. And they've got it inside the ten at the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw, and they're set up now with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. And that is caught for an AFC touchdown. A great play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the AFC able to cut it to within a score. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? And, you know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two, they don't get it. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You, you establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst, and if they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. The AFC out to kick it away as they send this one in the air. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now out comes Houston. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Second down and six now. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Daniels. And takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. Back-to-back -back four yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way downfield, ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. Third and two. He's got his line back out of the backfield. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. I like the fact that they didn't overcomplicate things on that call. Third and two, just run the quick little hitch, which they did. Ball's out of quarterback's hands, and yes, indeed, they took up the first down. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Throwing again, Johnson. It's caught, Smith. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. 
Again, he'll drop to throw. That is caught and able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. They're able to convert with a gain of four. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Yeah, he's able to force his way through one man, but he can muster only about a yard on the play, second down. Now second and nine. Up the middle they go. Daniels. And he's going to be met at about the 43. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. When a drive goes this long, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys up front, those big fellas, because the offensive line is putting something together that allows them to continue to control the ball. I know a lot of people think they get fatigued on a long drive. Actually, a lot of times the reverse happens. They actually get energized because they're controlling the ball and they're the ones dictating to the defense. Consecutive gains of one, two, and now three yards brings up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. The AFC offense set to take their next drive. And you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. yards for him on the ground now on that his 20th carry of the ball game. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. On first down, Diggs. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Got a man complete. It's Taylor. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. They'll run on first down. Diggs, and maybe a measure of revenge in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. It's complete to Diggs. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Now he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. On first down, Daniels. Yeah, to the right sideline. And it falls incomplete. It sort of looks like they stopped some fighting them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But if this defense gets two more stops, they can keep them out of that area. Here's second and ten. 
Looking to throw. Daniels to the right side. Complete to Taylor. Touchdown. A great effort there. 28 yards. And now they have taken a fourth quarter lead. And what a weapon he is at the tight end spot because when they throw him the football downfield, they count on him getting additional yardage almost every time. And that's exactly what he did there. Caught that, ran with it, all the way to the end zone. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They'll look to throw. And no, incomplete. They can't convert. So they tried to bump the lead up to a field goal. Instead, it stays at one here in the fourth. The AFC out to kick off as they send this one away. Taking it about the one. Oh, a good looking return set up here. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. 57 yards rushing for him now to this point. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Second and a couple. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Daniels. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That good for 22 and a first down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now. But that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Back to throw. Johnson. He completes it to Stewart. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's Johnson to throw on second down. This is caught. Touchdown! A great play there. 26 yards, and his guys are going to retake the lead. A plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth quarter lead. And around the goal line, especially on two-point tries, sometimes the QB's best friend is that big target the tight end. I love how you described it because you know he's going to have some length and some catch radius as well as a big body to keep people away from the football. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Jackson now to return. This taken in right around the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Indy set to go on offense once more. And now, after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. They'll start on the ground here on first down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. Back to throw now on second and ten. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 13. It's a first down. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. On first down, Diggs. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. So from the 37, here's second and nine. Looking to throw. Daniels. This one complete to Lacey. And we're working across midfield inside the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up the first down. to throw Daniels toward the center of the field but it's incomplete offense was moving it a little bit had them back on their heels but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion that gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further second and ten to throw again Daniels at this point in the second half one mistake on a forced throw could doom your chances of a comeback, so that's the right call there to just throw that one away. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Operating from the gun, Daniels. Throwing left side, it's complete. And down to the 20, he'll go before heading out of bounds. A nice pickup of 23 on the third down conversion. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. On first and 10, Daniels. So a good drive with a bad ending, Charles. They move it down the field well. Cannot finish it off, though, as it's intercepted in the end zone. Deflating, that has got to be the word here because they were sharp in moving it down the field. But sometimes you start thinking like a touchdown is a given. And it doesn't always work out that way as we saw there. Houston set to take over. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. Now a give right side. It's Owens. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big third down. I put the word big in capital letters here. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Johnson on third down. 
He finds his man complete. That's Owens. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. And they'll send out their punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And they will take over first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. What's the deal, y'all? Here comes second down at five. He'll look to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete <laughs> a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions, and that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Back to throw, and he can't get Throw away. He's taken down. Now the AFC going to take a timeout. It's their second as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances there. They move the chains and they save that final timeout. He's back to throw. Over the middle, it's complete. And remember, field goal does him no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. Here's second down. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down. And now they're in the hurry up. Now the AFC going to use their final timeout of the half as they'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Two huge plays there down the stretch. The sack on second down. Now they force the incompletion. That's going to lead to a do or die fourth down. And they look like they've got the confidence right now that no matter what gets thrown against them, whatever play gets run, they have the ability to shut it down. They're just brimming with it right now. This to possibly force OT. And that is going to be incomplete. Boy, they got the tip they were looking for but couldn't secure it. And this one's over. So it's our visitors that come away with a victory here. And it was thanks in part to the play of their third-year quarterback. Yeah, what struck me was how composed he was in the pocket. The numbers weren't spectacular. He had two touchdown passes. That's it. But he led his guys on some important drives when they needed it most. And they're going to come away with the victory.